We're back uh, with more on last night's state dinner honoring Japan's prime minister, showcasing the importance of the U.S.-Japan relationship at this particular moment in history. The U.S. is counting on Japan to help counter China's growing military strength in Asia as tensions run high over Taiwan and the Japanese island of Ishigaki, which is just 150 miles away. Japan is ramping up its military presence on that tiny picturesque territory, and it is not going over well with the people who live there. Elizabeth Palmer has more. Visitors to Ishigaki come for its white sand beaches, laid back vacations, and sunsets over the East China Sea. But there's trouble in paradise. Japan's self-defense forces have built a missile base smack dab in the middle of this tiny peaceful island. 600 soldiers with batteries of powerful weapons have arrived, and some islanders aren't happy. For us, it doesn't um, make sense. <laughs> Setsuko Yamazato was born on Ishigaki. When she heard about the base, she joined other protesters who fear putting arms on the island is asking for trouble. We feel very powerless, helpless. The people of Ishigaki have reason to worry. They sit on the very edge of a war waiting to happen. Just 150 miles that way across the sea lies Taiwan. Commander Yuichiro Inoue well knows that if China attacks Taiwan and the U.S. steps in, Japan, with its huge American military bases, could end up in the fight, putting Ishigaki on the front line. Already, Chinese warships patrol menacingly not far offshore, staking its claim to islands Japan claims too. And far too close for comfort, Colonel Inoue points to North Korea's ballistic missile launches. Our mission, he says, is to deter these threats. The Japan self-defense forces, with U.S. encouragement, have been amping up their role with a bigger budget as a fighting force. The change isn't going down well with many Japanese, including Yamazato. She was a little girl in World War II when U.S. Marines stormed ashore on the neighboring island of Okinawa. The American troops found island communities weakened by disease and extreme deprivation. You lost your mother and your sister? Sister, older brother, and uh, grandfather. Yamazato survived and then thrived. She built a happy life, working for years with U.S. overseas airlines as a flight attendant. Now, at 87, she cannot believe the threat of war is back. Do you fear that having the missiles here will make this island into a target? That's what fears me most. But it's a sad fact of modern life, says Commander Inoue. Probably a lot of people feel that way, he says, but they need to understand global and regional realities are very harsh. Harsh enough that Japan believes preserving the peace means weapons of war aimed outward over the turquoise seas. For CBS Mornings, I'm Elizabeth Palmer in Ishigaki.